look at what happened in release 29 and remember when we talk about releases, we're talking about the development and the technology that has been implemented within the system. They go by what we call R29, R30. So now we are working in R30. So R29 has been implemented. We're gonna look at what's going on with R30, what has been implemented, what needs to be fixed, what's been tested and is waiting for the push. What is going on with RPA? That's a big issue right now. So we're going to chat about that and I will let you know where it is in the testing. Then we're gonna review some known problems and open the meeting up for some Q and A. So this slide may seem familiar to you, but we always have issues with people and logging in. Um, I get emails consistently about members having problems logging in. If they have a CAC, they just need a VPN. If they do not have a CAC, they have to download the Okta app and create the username and password and walk through that. The instructions are on the MyFSS login page. Um, well, not the login page, but on our ARPC website. So ARPC website, retirements, my FSS, first time login instructions. That's how you can find it. But the question shouldn't be directed to me because I can only help you so far in this matter. You need to contact the service desk or email the service desk. So please direct all your members who have issues with the login feature to either this number with option six or the service desk email at A1, DTA A1. All right, Reserve Retirement Counseling Cell. This is for all the reservists. So if you are Air National Guard, please cover your, cover your ears. Don't contact these individuals, but their purpose here, as you can tell, is one-on-one -on -one counseling, meeting with you and trying to give you the service that all of us need and all of us want, but rarely get. So helping you understand what an entitlement is, helping you to understand what the different type of retirements do and how you are uniquely qualified for any given one of them. So they can answer those type of questions or pay estimates or just speak about some guidance. And if they don't know, they will do some research and get back to you. Um, but please, if you are a reservist or if you service reserve members, direct them to this counseling cell. Essentially, they should be helping up to the point that they submit their application. All those prerequisite questions, all those not sure what retirement type, contact the Reserve Retirement Counseling Cell. And for us at ARPC, we are trying to use our website in a more dynamic way. We have selected a POC to always review our website, keep information up to date. It is a challenge to keep things up to date because of the way development moves so quickly. So we are doing our best to make sure old information isn't out there, new information is being pushed, and that we are getting it through the chains that it needs to go through before it is pushed to the website, such as our PA, our chain of command, we have to get it edited. Sometimes by the time it gets edited, it's, it's old, and now we need to rewrite it. So please check the website if you have any questions. The one thing that I'm going to add here that's not on here. So the Microsoft Teams team, the toolbox, the 3FO toolbox, toolbox that we are monitoring and helping and providing all of these slides, providing our Q and A's. Please make sure that everyone in the M MPF, CSSs, they have access to this toolbox. If you do not, please get with us afterwards, send us your name, we can add you to it. But Randomly, I may go in and answer some questions. We always post information into this toolbox and we're trying to utilize this to be a more direct connection with you all, but also you have connection with your peers here further than just your MPF or your CSS. So you can get help from your peers across the Air Force. So please utilize that. The next information we're gonna talk about, R29, what has happened? But we pushed a lot of information and a lot of it worked, thankfully. So the system is now able to generate ad hoc retirement orders. So think conversion retirement orders, casualty orders, things of that nature. We can generate these in the new system. We also, as technicians, have the ability to edit retirement orders before finalizing. This is huge. It used to finalize the information and we had to 
go through all of our slides, which is a lot to make sure all the information is correct. And if we made a mistake, we would have to go ahead and amend that order and then issue first time to the member a retirement order and an amendment order. Now we're able to edit that document before we finalize it, which is going to help keep retirement orders simple and streamlined. We also have a submit on behalf of functionality for our technicians. This is not to be utilized for everyone. This is a last, uh, th this is to be utilized for all of those cases where it truly is an emergency and they do not have the access. We do not want everyone reaching out or using the MPF line just to get someone on our team to create a retirement application for the person that is in your office. They have to go through, if they don't have a cat card, use at least try and really try to get a username and a password so that they can then say, I've, I've exhausted all of my options. Now we're going to contact ARPC. Um, that's what it's there for, for those individuals who do not own a computer or those individuals who really do need the help. So please don't inundate us with this type of work, but we are here to support. ARPC, our technician permissions are interconnected and that means probably nothing to you. But what it means for us is that we no longer have to hunt down which permission somebody needs to do a small piece of our job. We have collected our job and put it under two or three permissions and now all of our technicians have those permission sets, which is going to help us service you all much better. What has been fixed? So the retirement order writing system was broken. It was not working. I'm sure you all felt it. Members saying my status updated, but I don't have any orders or I see that somebody's working, but I don't have any orders. That's because we couldn't generate those orders, but we are now able to generate the active duty, the age 60, the reserve retirement orders in the system. We can also, if a technician uploads an attachment on accident, since we are processing so many of these at one time, we can delete those attachments and we're not pushing out the wrong information to the wrong individual. We are really trying to build out this system and it seems like it should be intuitive, but it takes some time to get a system to really function in the way that you want it to. So even a simple feature such as delete needed to be tested probably 10 different ways. So what's broken? When we complete our retirement request, we have to click certain boxes so that a NGB 22 or DD 214 or an outbound request is generated so that the follow-up actions can be done. Well, th these are creating partial child incidents and we are working with the separations team to help fix the NGB 22s. We are tracking the 214s and right now outbound, is, outbound incidents are working. So we just tell you all this because there may be delay in the NGB 22s or the DD 14s and we want you to know why so that you can tell your customers, hey, this is being worked. It is already annotated. We do not need to be inundated with, I think I found a bug or an error, or how do I work this? We will be pushing out as soon as it's corrected to you all so that you can let your individuals know. The MPF CSS report, it is not completely broken, but not functioning as we want it to function. So some of you may still have access in production. I just met with a chief and she showed me what she could see and it's functioning, but it's not the dynamic tool that we want it to be for you all. So the issue for us is that it's not consistently pulling up the correct MPF ID or the passcode for any given technician. And it's only displaying a limited amount of data. It's still not showing you everything that you need to see. And sometimes it's showing what you don't need to see. So we're trying to make sure that this the efficacy, the, the accuracy of this system is good and will meet the needs that you all have. So I will, I know that I said last time that I'm going to be teaching you in this town hall about the MPF CSS report. I have to delay that until the next time. And if it populates and it gets corrected sooner than that, maybe I'll create a town hall just for this and also take a video and push that out to the field. But I know that you all desperately want this report to be fully functioning because it will make your life way easier.
but that's R29 as of right now. We're working through two lingering issues and we have fixed everything else that went out. So release 30, what is going on? What's taking up all of our time right now? Well, a lot of this is taking up our time, but the next slide, RPA is really taking up our time. So let me work through this quickly. What has been implemented? Well, on our technician view, we have the service per 10 USC 1405, the base pay, the, the service per title 10 USC section 12732, and also the active service for retirements. All of these are data elements that is needed to calculate retirement, um, to make sure that you're you're eligible and it goes on your retirement order. So we have been able to make this a more intuitive process for our technicians to ensure standardization, consistency and accuracy of your retirement orders. So a lot of what we're working on here is refining the, the main aspects of our work and the main documents and services we provide for the customers. Technicians are also able to upload documentation to ARMS direct from IFSS. So we no longer have to print out hundreds of retirement orders and documents to send manually to arms. Some of you are probably thinking, why in the world are they working like they did in the 80s? But we were for a little while. Um, when I first got the ARPC, we were still using a fax machine. So we've come a long ways. We've come a long, long ways. Um, but this is a huge win for us um, here at ARPC. We have had a lot of people, surprisingly, contact us about the foreign employment. So the verbiage has been updated to be more clear, more concise, and a little more exhaustive. It's not completely exhaustive, but it tells you what you need to do. So please go to the application information section two and four and review that information. And please make sure the retirees understand this limitation. They have to get approval before they get hired with a foreign government. Um, it, it's kind of a big deal. But review the information. If you have questions, reach out and follow all of the, the guidance that we added to it. Tested in a waiting release. So what this means is we have different levels of testing. We have UAT testing, which is just a phase one. Then we have pre-production, which is phase two. Then we go into production and we've run through it quickly to make sure that it's still working as you all see it. So Think of it as three levels of business testing, and we are the business at ARPC. We have development testing before that. So right now, all of these different bullet points have been tested through pre-production and are awaiting to be pushed to production. That is when it's going to be available to you all. So when we talk about submitting an inquiry related to an ARC retirement app or RCSPB from the dashboard, that is tested we have created it it's going to be pushed shortly r30 has been not pushed in its entirety yet our ability to interact with the member affect the sub status and the status from the same feature that is going to be pushed our the system's ability to automatically check for 07s or pull up the retirement codes or really to make sure that the right person is applying for the right type of retirement like limiting the individuals who are headquarters assigned from really routing an application to us. Um, and that is specific to a certain population. So if you're confused, it's not directed to you. Um, the system's becoming smarter and it's helping guide the customer in a better way. So we're hopeful that when this gets pushed, that in production, there will not be any bugs and that this will help you and your customers make more sense of the system that we keep trying to make better. RPA, this is a, a big topic right now and this is where we have been testing. We have been creating scripts, testing scripts, going into UAT, going into pre-production, pulling people from production to do the testing because the calculator is still down. Our interim solution is still working. You can find those instructions at the hyperlink here. They have not changed. But the status is we're testing in pre-production right now. Features that are being tested concern our calculations, the status, substatus correlation, our communication functionality, and the data flow from PCARS to MyFSS. That data flow is really complicated, and how it calculates that is really important for you all. So we have probably close to 60, 70 scripts that we're testing. 
and we're not just one person testing and passing, but multiple people are testing and multiple different records are being tested. So this is taking up a lot of our time, but it's incredibly important that we get it right in pre-production so that when it goes live, we don't have to take it away. So please bear with us. I know this may be a strain on you all in the field and a lot of customers are not gonna like it, but we have those instructions for the interim solution. If they need to use those, please make sure they're using those solutions to get their RPA benefits. Future state of RPA, all components will have their verified orders automatically populate in their request. This was not the case for the Air National Guard. It has always been the case typically for the reservist, but we've been able to link MyFSS to Eros G. The only thing that will need to be supplied is the potentially qualifying orders that have not been completed. So we, we can't do it all. We can't pull everything that hasn't been verified, but 98% of your documentation will automatically be verified and you will be able to see the potentially qualifying and qualifying data prior to submitting an ROPA application, which is huge. That's not what was the, that was not the case in the old system. The format is going to be more intuitive is going to walk you through separate screens, ask you specific questions, have you answer in a specific way. So it should be very intuitive and help you get the benefits that you need. So RPA is moving. There is a way of working it right now, but our future state is looking very hopeful. So please bear with us. And we are here to answer questions. Known problems. We have had a lot of email issues the ROM and the TMC, those email notifications were still intermittent, but we just passed that bug in UAT. We did a lot of deep diving into permissions and how profiles interact with the system. And we think we found the issue. So I just passed it in UAT on Friday. Now we were, we were ginning up to pass it in pre-production shortly, or at least test it. So it's not testing in pre-production, but we are ginning up to do that delayed emails from technicians to members. We just were notified of a member receiving a notification weeks after the fact, and it concerned them because it said it was disapproved after it had been approved. So we are looking at what could possibly cause this, this blockage in the system to withhold an email and then randomly send it out. So we will let you know if you are having that issue with people receiving information much later please let us know so we can use those as case studies. The six month waiver warning. We are building the logic to correct the calculation. Essentially, as I said last time, we have to make the date that that six month is calculated from a static date and not a date that moves and is dynamic. So we are finding the right data point within the system to anchor this logic to. That's essentially what, what me and the dev team and the the rest of the development team is doing here at the business. So six month waiver warning should not be confusing any of you or our technicians any longer because we are we are really close to finding a solution. What is the date that I go on? What is the static date? Remember, I mean, five or what? Well, that's what we're, we're figuring out. So we have to make sure that it is your application and it is, it is a certified application, meaning that if you just create an application, say I open up an application, I select age 60, but then I have to go to a meeting and I don't get back to it for two months. I don't wanna go off of the date that you open the application. I wanna go off of the date that you route it through your, your chain of command. So we're building in those data points so that we can attach this logic to when did so-and-so coordinate on this application for the first time to their ROM or TMC. That's the date that we're gonna anchor it to. Yeah. Yeah. All right, highest grade hail warning. It was asking for a memo, the verbiage was wrong. So as you can see over here on the, the right-hand side, we have a new waiver, uh, we have a new justification message. So please read through that. We attached the AFI, we attached the possible documentation and we attached a hyperlink to this so that you can go to the knowledge article. Please utilize that information. And we're sorry for the confusing language. Um, as of right now, we are working to make this more understandable as well. 
sometimes when we develop in a bubble and when we we talk past one another, one another, we get language wrong. But we are always willing to make corrections. So private comments visible to the applicant. What this means is if I send your application to another technician asking them to look at something for me, I put in a private note just to communicate and coordinate that work. That was visible to the applicant. So we are in the final stages of correction. It is being worked as I speak. It may be getting corrected as I speak. So hopefully we will not have confusing communication between the technician and the, the member any longer. So the historical cases that we have been waiting for visibility of, especially the members, it has been migrated. And the migration validation is scheduled for release in R30, which is later on in August. So maybe the third to fourth week of August is when R31 or release 31 is going to be pushed. So we are hopeful that we are going to have complete visibility of all the migrated cases and that we can push forward with my FSS cases. Erroneous mandatory information on retirement application. What this means is in the data field under the spouse certificate section that requests a middle initial, mandatory logic was attached to that data field and it shouldn't be there. We spoke about this last time. You can place a space in that and that will suffice the system requirement or you could put NMN, no middle name. It's up to you, but as of right now, if you do not get the next action and that is grayed out, it is because typically you do not have a middle initial in that spouse certificate. Another thing that's kind of important, when you route the application, I didn't route the I didn't write this on the, the screen, but I've had to work with five people in the past week about this. If I'm going to route my application, I type in a name or an email address and I hit search. That name populates. Then I need to click on that and hit select, then submit. A lot of people are just typing in Bill Gunter and hitting submit. Then they get an error because they didn't actually select Dylan Gunter to route the application to me. They just put my name in or whomever's name and hit submit. You have to make sure they're hitting search and selecting the individual before hitting submit. That's been a huge problem. Um, and we're looking at possibly creating more instructions or making the system more intuitive because I thought that was somewhat intuitive with the search button there, but apparently not. So if anyone's wondering about the routing issues, it's more than likely the middle initial. And if you're getting to the routing stage, it's more than likely they're not hitting search and select before hitting submit. So those are the, the overarching issues that we're, we're working, that we're fixed, that we see coming and where we kind of want to move MyFSS retirements next into R31. So do you have anything? I'm going to hand this over to Major Eggman now. I'm really short. Um, good morning, everyone. Thanks so much to Sergeant Gunter. Uh, there were a few things that I wanted to bring up. Just make sure that everyone's on the same page. He lives in the development world every single day. And um, I also want to bring in some current ops information. So we are currently still pretty caught up. So I want to go through each retirement type so that I can tell you if there is an issue, you need to let us know and not wait till the last minute. For, um, I do want to bring up that 25% of our team right now is testing RRPA. So I think that's a good statistic to take to your leadership and to your wing to let them know if they haven't seen movement that a very large part of our workforce who processes applications is not um, working on them at the current time. For reserve retirements, we are still operating out of both systems. Most reserve retirements have been completed in the old one unless they were pending an officer grade determination and enlisted grade determination. Um, they had an assignment availability code 37 assigned to their profile or there was a nuance of something that we needed. Uh, so please, if you have one that seems really off that hasn't been completed, uh, let us know. Call the MPF line. Uh, let's figure that one out. 
In the new system, we're working on or about end of May, beginning of June. Uh, they are in our service level agreement. Our goal here at ARPC is to complete a reserve retirement within 60 days of receipt, I do, regardless of what the retirement effective date is. I do request that you give us some more leniency right now to about uh, 60 to 90 days, pending all of the training that we've had to undergo with our technicians. A lot of our reserve retirement technicians are the ones that are testing the RRPA application. And so therefore we are becoming a little bit more delayed than we were in the past. Any person who is an age 60 or a reduced retired pay age applicant that are in the gray area and or are still participating, we're right in August right now. So we strive to be 30 to 60 days ahead of their re requested retirement date. However, we have been operating out of both systems. We had two and a half weeks where our orders didn't work. Uh, therefore, we were also slightly delayed on these. Uh, we are seeing an increase in congressionals. So also seeing an increase of actively participating members calling our MPF line, saying that they're upset that their retirement is in two weeks and they haven't gotten their retirement order. I will always harp and remind that until a member completes their last day of participation in an age 60 or a reduced retired pay age situation, we have to wait for their last day of participation for their points to roll up with points management. And it's typically seven to 10 days post that. That is typical. So uh, please remind your members. And again, we are in about August. So uh, we are a little bit closer than we'd like to the retirement effective dates. We have some manpower uh, struggles that we're going on with hiring and we're hoping to get more in shortly. We've had a few depart. Uh, regular retirements, we are on or about November of this year with retirement effective dates. There are some outliers to that we recognize. Uh, however, we strive to be 120 days prior to the retirement effective date. I wanted to provide an update on the 20 year letter as well. Um, I've been seeing a lot of inquiries about this. So I'm going to read directly from um, the lead over that section. Currently, if you are notified of your 20 years prior to the MyFSS migration, you can access your letter by sending a MyFSS incident and we will send it to you. It will be fixed so all can see, so all can access the 20 year letter in application at the end of August. So I believe in the next release, if you had it prior to the transition, you will be able to go get your 20 year letter. However, if you need one right now, you need to send a MyFSS incident and we will send it to you. If you are notified after 1 April of your 20 years of completion, the election and 20 year letter job aid is available to locate that application. That was something that was just pushed into production not too long ago with all of our rosters we have been working on. So please let your members know if they were notified after 1 April of their 20 year completion that the election and 20 year letter job aid is available. Uh, we are behind notifying members for this year, and we are hoping to be caught up by the end of this month. So with that, I know I've received a lot of questions on. Um, a few other quick things before we go to Q&A. I appreciate Sergeant Gunter explaining a lot of the bad and stuff to you all. I know it doesn't directly affect you. However, it's extremely important for the field to understand the struggles that we're having here that are delaying our ability to create retirement orders in a uh, quick fashion, just even the submit to arms. The fact that we didn't have the capability to put it directly into arms or PRADA until recently is a really, really big thing for us. And I think that your members questioned a lot as well. I wanted to talk about off-grade determination. There was a question that got fixed yet. I know you guys are working it. Will it go into release? Okay, release three one. We've had a lot of people who go through the office grade determination tab at an officer and they were confused again by the verbiage that said please submit um, the SECAF decision. And it and some people were unclear how they would do that. It's only a member needs an officer determination if a commander puts in any one of those. Um, bubbles that according to the AFI, that an officer determination is required. If they put yes in those, um, then you should have the commander hold on to the application until an officer determination is routed. 
Uh, for the guard, it goes from your wing to your HQ to NGB and then up. And for the reserve, a PSDG is forthcoming shortly for how those should be routed into whom um, for anyone who has questions on that. We are working with uh, AFRIC A1 and REP on that. The enlisted grade determination portion, I also just wanted to clarify. So we, in the past, uh, we have refined our process. So we have had, if any of you have had a member who had a highest grade held and it was potentially a higher grade held, it was a four cause demotion. We have been trying to clarify with staff what required documents were needed for those individuals. So we have reached out to any application that we haven't completed and we are pushing about 25 packages forward. So if you fall in that realm of somebody that was in a holding pattern, that is why. Like Sergeant Gunter said in what is on the screen, we are changing our verbiage because we are now going to require the member to submit on their behalf all of the documentation that is required. And that is in a live knowledge article that exists out there right now in the format it needs to be and what needs to be included. Having those documents prepared ahead of time and with the application is going to ensure that we can process uh, in a quick fashion. Release 30 is this week. So I think we mentioned this before and I just wanna make sure that everyone is aware is that if there is a bug that we are testing across the enterprise, not just in retirements, if an issue is occurring, I'm saying this right, right? It has to be completed before the release can happen for the entire enterprise. So sometimes it's not stuff with retirements. And I know that as of yesterday morning, there were two bugs that were waiting to be tested to make sure that they could be released. And so R30, I believe is supposed to be later this week, beginning of next week, as long as all goes well. And then the last thing that I wanted to update the field on that has absolutely nothing to do with retirements before we go to questions is that as of yesterday, Air National Guard separation orders are working. So they tested it, it passed, and so you should start seeing separation orders and all actions happen in conjunction with the MILPDS update and the NGB-22. So that's good news that you can take to your wings if you're in the Air National Guard. Um, because the next release is supposed to be set for end of March, I'm <laughs> like end of August, uh, we like to try to do these two weeks post that release. And the reason being that a lot of times because those aforementioned bugs that happen, the release is set for a certain date. And then the release doesn't happen for potentially five to 10 days after. It's always a goal. So um, Sergeant Gunter is going to hold the next town hall. And like he said, if we have reports capabilities um, that he can train on prior to that, he most definitely will try. I hope that you all recognize that uh, he works many, many hours trying to make everything else function. And so if we have to wait till September 12th for that, um, we will also wait. So now I think we're gonna open up to any questions that you all may have. And I just open up the chat. Are all comments viewable at ARPC level or just comments from the last coordination? All comments are viewable at the ARPC level. To confirm if an application is disapproved, the airman must resubmit a new one and route their TMC and commander again, correct? That is correct. We do not reopen applications. It does need to be resubmitted. Uh, we are, I have had a few instances where we recognize the MPF line calls, something is in error, uh, but that is not common and we are trying to ensure that people utilize the system appropriately and know the right things to click and check and what to do. Uh, when will the red knowledge article be published for retirement in lieu of demotion or administrative discharge? Uh, so you mentioned Hellberg, there is not an intent to publish a retirement article on that because that is two separate processes for the Guard and Reserve, neither of which is owned by ARPC, uh, two different offices coordinate on those. So I, I don't have an answer for you on that. Uh, we can talk with A1K and um, REP on a potential PSDG, but no knowledge article that I'm aware of. Can a retirement application be reassigned by ARPC to another user? We cannot do that. 
We do not have the function to reassign. We don't even have the function to see an application until it gets to ARPC. That is not a functionality that was built for us. Um, a wing TMC has an application reassigned by ARPC back to them, but they could not see. You could do that? I didn't think we had that capability at all. I shared the screen with um, Sergeant Vichetti and uh, it was reassigned by someone in your office. Um, if you look at the admin side, you could see that it was reassigned to him, but he couldn't see it in the main application. So it doesn't work. So I told him to call back and get clarification over. My question is, was it ever submitted to ARPC or was it routed to an individual in ARPC? It was submitted to ARPC over. And they routed it in coordination back to a TMC or assigned it? Yeah, I, I would love to see this just to we would need to stop this functionality from existing. Yeah, there's supposed to be no capability that the member at the unit is supposed to be able to pull back and reroute it, but ARPC should not be routing anywhere. So send Sergeant Gunter an email, let him know the name, and we'll look at the application, please. Roger that. Um, when will Air Maneuver approve retirement in the system get their order? It will be immediate because it's just like the old system. We send them a message. We give them the instructions on how to get it. And will it flow from ARMS to View and Prada? Yes, it will. I just spoke with someone today and they had the retirement order and now it was removed from their MyFSS application and it's not in Prada and I confirmed that over. Okay, send an email to Sergeant Gunter with that individual's name so we can see if, what's going on. Roger that, that thank you. Happen. Yeah, absolutely. That's the first I've heard of that. Uh, thank you for inviting. Would you also provide a template for enlisted an officer time and grade waivers? No, ARPC Sergeant Hubbard does not own either of those processes. Enlisted an officer time and grade waivers. Um, you're a reservist, I believe. So um, I will tell you again, retirement in lieu of uh, admin demotion or discharge uh, and the time and grade waiver we are still talking with REP and A1K on the responsibility and where that lies. Um, I just don't have an estimated time for any more information for that. Uh, Sergeant Sherman, is the capability for the MPF to see all retirements in their wing without the retirement being routed to them being fixed? Yes, that, that is what Sergeant Gunter has. That's, that's the MPF CSS report that we are building and that we are trying to make completely functional for you all so that you can see what retirements are occurring in your EPF or CSS without them having to be routed to you? Sergeant Hubbard asked RRPA future with the new update for to pull from arrows G. Remember to have been both African A and G will pull from both. That's a question I don't know. One second. It should pull from both. Um, I will jot that down and get that, that answer to you. That's a very good question. That is a good question. For members who are getting out under MSD, do they need to submit a retirement application? So we always recommend that members submit a retirement application upon MSD or HYT. We recognize that the AFI says that they don't need to. However, uh, they will not get their retirement order until post their retirement date because we do it about a month after the fact. We are catching up on our MSD roster right now. Um, because of all of the things that we have going on. Uh, additionally, we know that um, some members meeting MSD have to submit a pay application because they're going directly into pay. So, and then also, are they having a ceremony? Do they have a spouse and want a certificate? There's a lot of information that we require that it's extremely helpful. So the answer is no, the AFI says they don't need to. Do we run a roster and, and complete those? Yes. Are we behind right now? Yes. Uh, do we request they input them? Yes. Uh, Callie Woodruff says a retirement cell is just reserved, correct? That is correct. Uh, they're gaining statistics right now and then hopefully pushing them to the Air National Guard to see if there is any manpower that they are willing to provide to provide the same service. Mm -hmm. um, but as of right now, there is no forecast or um, intent yeah. from the Air National to do that. There's been some conflicting information. Clarify, are reserve, not Air National Guard members retire on their ETS date or does the retirement date need to be the day following? It actually needs to be the day prior to their ETS. Um, it cannot be on their ETS because then they are separated effective 0001. 
I understand that for reenlistments, you do it the day post their ETS, I believe, and you pull um, it in like the, the day post, but for retirements, it needs to be the day prior because of effective at midnight that night, they are discharged and become a former member. Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am, you cut out a little bit. Can you repeat the first little bit of that? Yeah, um, it has to be the day prior to their ETS. If they hit their ETS, then at 0001, they become a, technically a discharged member, a former member, and they are not eligible to apply for retirement. So it should be the day prior. We have had a legal read on this recently uh, within the past six months because there has been a lot of back and forth on that. So it's a really, a really great question. So it must be the day before. Okay, so then if their retirement date is a day before the ETS, then going off of all the other retirement, the way we do it, then their last participation day would basically be two days before their ETS. So that way they wouldn't be participating on the requested retirement date. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay, excellent. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, your next question is, how do members request presidential retirement certificates? So they don't need to request a presidential retirement certificate, but ARPC only provides the current president. So there is a knowledge article out there with all of the information on the previous presidents. It is on the member to complete, to request that from whatever presidential library that that previous president was the part of. So like I said, there's a lot of information out there on the certificate uh, knowledge article. So please go there. Uh, will members receive one automatically? Yes. So we are behind. We also have been trying to put out, so for the guard and the A1 up, I try every single month to work with um, our retirements technician and complete, sorry, our outbound technician and complete where we are. We are still trying to get ahead of retirement effective, sorry, retirement ceremony dates. So right now we are on or about 15 September. I do want you all to know that we are struggling right now with multiple avenues of reports and old um retirement applications that were in the old system. We are manually tracking their need for an NGB 22 and an outbound certificate. We have so many avenues of outbound retirement certificates and we only have two people who worked on there. So we are doing our very, very, very best to get after getting those certificates out. Uh, we appreciate everyone's patience on that. Uh, so I don't want to speak too much on survivor benefit program because I am not an expert um, on that. If they had either elected or were automatically put in for an amount and what to change it to no election. So if you're talking about open season specifically and they are still participating, we uh, are you guard or reserve? Was that a reservist? Yeah, uh, reserve. There there is an open season right now and there are instructions on how to send out to us. I'll, I will uh, screenshot the open season information we've been putting out to the guard. Uh, we've been trying to find avenues to put it out to the reserve, but I will, I will copy and paste our instructions from our, um, cause retirement's office is different than the benefits and entitlements, RCSBP and casualty office. I know they all intermingle, but that is not so much Sergeant Gunter Mai's area of expertise, we know enough to be dangerous, but not to speak specifically. So still participating open season members, I will put into the um, chat on the retirement's town hall or um, information toolbox that information for you. Okay, good. First I'm asking about their approved reduced retirement in April of 2025, but since being on order, they feel they can retire in April 2024. So they can't inquire on this, Master Sergeant Constantini. I mean, they can, but if you can continuously relay to them how much we are trying to work on what is affecting here right now, we are hoping that this is going to be fixed within the next four weeks. Like I said, we have a lot of manpower. We just request patience mm -hmm. on this topic. We understand that it's six to 12 months. We understand what the AFI says. We understand what we hear at ARPC push. Um, however, this very specific instance is a circumstance where we we can only do as much as we can do right now, and, and we cannot get after April 2024 at the current moment. So just requesting patience. Um, is there a way to submit a trouble ticket? One of the commanders had two requests stuck at them that only try to load and never open. So 
Hey, Mike, by the way, um, go ahead and call the MPF line. And or if you want to send something, there isn't a trouble ticket specific to the application. So what do you want them to do? Yeah, there's not a trouble ticket. There's not like help. I need system, system support, right? Um, I would say this is strange because it shouldn't be stuck. And I would say, and he more than likely has done this, try different browsers, try clearing your cache, try all of the normal things that we do when we have system issues. Um, if it does not work, have the member re-coordinate it away from the commander, back to the commander to see if it's fixed. And if that fixes it, let me know. But if none of that works, send me an email with the, the incidents and I will need to share a screen with the commander. For a reserve active duty 20 year points retirement, I select yes that I transferred post 9-11 GI Bill benefits because I transferred them in 2011 when I was on active duty. So my service commitment for the transfer expired in 2015, but the application only allowed me to select a date for commitment expiration in 22, 23, or 24. Why can't I select the correct date? Does, do you know about that? That's part of the TMC portion. I um, know, should not let them. Yeah, I don't. I like why the calendar is limited to 22, 23, or 24. That shouldn't be the case. Um, so I will write that down. And if you send me an email chat, I can get that information to you. I'm also interested to know if it says, do you, doesn't want the block, do you still have an active duty service commitment? Yes. Uh, Chuck, can you tell us, are you answering no, you do not have an active duty service commitment? Uh, the uh, it looked like the question. The first question was, "Did you transfer benefits?" Uh, that it looked like that was the first question. So that answer to that question was yes. The next question on the application is, uh, "Do you still have an active duty service commitment?" And I believe that answer was selected as no. And then okay. it says, "What is the expiration of your commitment for 9/11 GI Bill transfer? Post 9/11 GI Bill transfer?" You do the drop down box and you select 2004, 23, or 22. But when I go scroll up to 2015, none of those exist before 2022. So I just had to select the earliest date of January 1st, 2022, even though it's completely incorrect. And I didn't know if the system is, it, it only cares about did you transfer the benefits while you were in the reserves, not while you were back on active duty but I don't want to select no, I didn't transfer benefits because I, I want to make sure that the transfer of my benefits is captured in my retirement paperwork. Well, that makes sense. Um, the system's not smart enough to think as you are thinking. So I would say there has to be either a system glitch and I want to make sure that it's not just isolated with you, but you're filling out the TMC portion for your own application. Is that correct? My TMC told me that it was my responsibility to fill out the TMC portion and that she just reviews it, which I found interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know um, if you, I don't know who the mother of all TMCs is, but I'm wondering if anybody, um, Chief Wilson, are you on the call? I I saw your name earlier. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, Chief. Very good. Do you think good. There's, we could get any counseling to that TMC that that is not the case, that the members should not be filling out their own stuff? Very good, let me see. Who who do I need to get back to? Who was just speaking? Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Chip Fisher, 913th uh, Airlift Group, 913th OSS. Okay. Thanks, Chief. Absolutely. Good stuff, thank you. Okay, um, trying to get back down right there. So, Senior Master and Spangler, for a member who retired from REGAF and joined through the Indispensability Program and now exiting the program, do they submit a retirement application or do we request assignment transfer back to active duty retirement through? So, you don't do any of that. You are guard, right? Or you reserve, Sergeant Spangler. Is she right in the bottom? 
Sir, who's been there? I can't, I feel like your guard, but I can't remember. I think she is. I know, but it's, in, I have to know what component you're in before I can answer that question. She's a reserve. Okay, so the reserve does go through my vector and they work with DPA. Um, and I don't have, I used to have the knowledge article for that, but I don't know where it's gone. DPA here at ARPC switched to um, my vector and they are trying to create an account in my SS so that we can put all of our information there. For a reservist, I cannot fully speak because it, it's called a retire revert and it depends on where they came from and it depends on where they're going. Um, the only piece that ARPC retirements has to a member retire reverting for indispensability is recomputation of their pay. So if they originally retired active duty and then they did a lot of time, maybe they promoted, lots of stuff happened. Uh, they need to submit a ticket to us, which we are working on a knowledge article for, and that ticket will include any orders, um, like you said, a discharge certificate and or separation order, and then um, it'll, it will come back to us. So Sergeant Spangler, if you send me a message because you have an individual, um, I can get you over to the right person in DPA who can assist. Because we're on the topic, any International Guard members who are in an indispensability program, um, the member either has to request a separation or the MPF has to request a separation from ANG separations so that we can revert their status and then they will receive that separation order and another NGB 22. And then you request a recomputation of retired pay through ARPC retirements through a miscellaneous Q ticket. Sergeant Wren, I understand DD 214s are not working properly. Is there a workaround? So they're just not spawning the tickets. So I'm glad you brought that up. We are doing a lot of manual work for individuals who require a DD-214, um, but a ticket is not automatically populating. So we are still working with the DD-214 here team across the hall. It's just the capability to make it automatic is not working right now. So we shouldn't have, and, and as a reminder, DD-214s cannot populate until the member's retirement date. So if you're a month before and they have their retirement order and they're like, why don't I have my DD-214? You don't get a DD-214 until you complete service because that is a document that says what your service was. And if you have 30 days and you get a DUI in those 30 days and a lot of stuff happens, we can give you a document that says that your service was honorable until your service is complete. All right, apologies in advance, may be late. Um, when does the six month waiver requirement start? So we are working towards the algorithm to create the start date to be when they submit it for routing. So I see the rest of it, eight minute route requirement request, TMC, or TRP, or PRP. As of right now, it's a dynamic date that six month calculation is always supplied from when the application is uploaded today, when you do it, that's when the six month logic uh, calculates. So obviously that is working as we were doing that today as we're making sure that we're going to follow them. So I will have to look at the DAFI that you yeah, stated. Yeah, I wrote down the DAFI. Okay. So if it says to A or PC, then it has to be when it goes out of coordination to work in progress. Can you all hear me? Was I frozen? It was cutting in and out a little bit. Yeah, and apologies. Just There's a fat finger on that death fee. It ends in three, not eight. Okay, um, that's what I wondered. And that's that's still an AFI. Um, that's yeah, so that confused me. I think that it should be published soon. It's in final court for the new one, but thank you. We'll look. Yes, and essentially what we're going to be doing is if it has to be ARPC, we have to hunker that down to a different data element. If it can be TMC, we have that one kind of figured out. We have both of those irons in the fire. So thank you for the question. 
Uh, Callie Woodruff, so you said you called, I read your whole question. This is specific to you. You called IRPC. They said it was fixed, but I looked in Deers and the reserve tire tab is gone. However, he has no guard tab. Um, it is something for you to submit to us. So call, call the line back again, the retirement MPF line. Um, I will tell you that our Deers MPF line is not managed today due to a few issues that arose. So um, you can contact the MPF line or the commander's line and we'll get to that submitted with them. Make sure everything we did on our end is good and I'll go from there. I have a member who received a new notification of 20 year letter in July of 23 and August of 23 when it was, sorry. When it was previously received July 19. The concern is this weekend they received a new notice about having to redo their benefit election. Can they be told to reassure that their great area election exists has not been dropped? Um, submit a ticket. That team is really, really up on tickets. I mean, they're a little bit more delayed, but they should hear a response back in about seven to ten days ish. So if you need something in that, please go ahead and uh, submit a ticket specific to their instance and they will get back to you. Will there be a feature where we will be able to pull a copy of the retirement order for a member like we did in VPC? Um, no, not at this moment. We are not working on that since the coordination has changed. It has changed the way that we can service the individual, and that's not in any of our upcoming enhancements. Like we said, Sergeant Wren, um, I think in previous town halls, but we always try to get to the member's retirement prior to the retirement date, pending factors. And so product, once the submit to arms functionality we know is good, then once that is approved, then you should be able to pull from the product. Where can we find all the releases, Sergeant Constantini? You, you can't, we, they're not really published to the public from what I'm no. aware of. They are so constantly changing, I think, Sergeant. Gunter mentioned before, as soon as we get information out, information changes. So there is not a desire to post pieces um, from, this is this is half A1. This is so much bigger, it goes across the entire airport. So um, please just can you listen on our town halls. It also, it wouldn't make any sense um, if I published them and you all were reading it, it wouldn't make zero sense on how they are labeled and how they interact because they all interact together and you could have five different aspects release. So what I give you here is a translation of a release. So it, um, I don't know who wrote this, but you said the ANG PSDT retirement has this for DSGs or technicians approaching ETS. This conflicts with what was just stated. Is there a new PSD for ANG retirements? Because it says for traditional members or military technicians approaching their ETS, ensure your request for retirement effective is the same day. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, I will get with A1P. I have uh, tried to coordinate with this, this with them as well. Um, and I I know that that SDT is from 2013. Um, I will work to get that moved. I don't know that PSD exists more. Um, we are working out of ways and we have not started coordinating a new, new PSDG for that. So uh, I have two members that applied via VPC for retirement dates in August. It was 6th August. They had a ticket submitted in my FSS asking for status and was told he would have it before. Member still does not have it. Uh, 315 Air Wing, can you shoot me a message with the name of that person and I'll look into it. We are fielding many phone calls. Yeah. And the application number if you have it. Yeah, and social, anything that can help me would be awesome. We are feeling many phone calls for prior members that are getting ready to turn age 60, but have not received anything getting their pay started. Uh, we don't have anything currently in place, uh, Taylor Vocal. We did um, two years ago. We are working towards getting that functionality set back up to notify them four months prior. I think it's four months prior to their 60th birthday. Uh, that is another thing on our to-do list. Um, but you said they are concerned with their MyPERS application. We do not have visibility. That's a different one. Oh, okay. Wait, we scroll back up. Sorry. So this one right here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, sorry. That was no. Mm -hmm. 
So both of these are. Yeah, I, I mixed it all up. So for senior master sergeant Tadaro, we are not sending anything out currently. We have information on our website on how they complete the process. Uh, and we are working towards the functionality to send it to them again. And then for Taylor Vocal, you said they're asking the status. Um, it's really hard for me to say right now. We're working on the migration of those cases. We understand H60 members are very stressed out. Uh, we are doing everything in our capability to get the migration to be effective so that people can see that application in their MyFSS dashboard. It, it has not happened yet. Uh, voicing this to leadership every day because we recognize that that is very stressful. And trust, we don't want to answer calls. That's we're getting these members. Uh, that you ensure that if the applicant in it's working in or about August, September, and uh, for information. I know that I very cherries. They don't like that answer. I we're trying, so I'm sorry. Policy guidance that allows reserve retirement eligible members to extend their enlistment solely for the purpose of retirement. I, I do not know any enlistment extension reenlistment or AFI. So I, I cannot answer that question. Thank you, Colonel Cobb. Thank you, Colonel Cobb. Give me a okay, so I'm having yeah, program. Okay, uh, are members still required to fill out the application in all uppercase letters? If so, can the programmers make it so it automatically happens? Right now, fields allow upper and lowercase. So we requested that um, because that is what looks most best formatted. So right now, the programmers know that we would like that. It's not as simple as make it happen, right? Um, to build in a translation of lower and upper, just the upper. That's that's an enhancement that's going to come, but that's a nicety right now. We're trying to get all the functionality working. So it will happen one day. I would still direct all members to utilize all caps. Please change the wording for the following statement inside the application. We'll write that down. Okay, yeah, double negatives, love it. Yeah, we'll write that down. So for the MC room, when we created this, we don't necessarily govern all of that. We basically utilized everything out of BPC, so I appreciate that. Yes, understand this, but these members and committees from asking the question over and over, would you please add? Yes, that's exactly how we wrote it. <laughs> it's uh, verbatim, yep. please be advised if required. I That's... think you put the colon in there and we didn't put the colon. But yeah. other than that, it said, if it is required, blah, 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 blah. So, so are you saying, Sergeant Hubbard, that you cannot see any notes at all? Is are you that... talking about patients? Right. I'm sorry, can you say it again? It, it went out and it, it went in, in and out again. Oh, that, I'm sorry. I, we just okay. said you... Any are you asking if any person who routes there can see all the notes from your internal routing? Well, it's like um like if the member puts comments on and then they route to me as a TMC and I put comments on and then I route to the commander, like the commander is saying they can't see what the member said. Um, I didn't know if you know there is a way or like even after it goes to you guys. And then I go in and maybe there's a workaround I'm just not aware of, but I go in to see like maybe what the notes were. Like I can only see what the commander puts on. I can't see what I put. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, I believe the program is built this way. And I have brought that up to the because you cannot see the high history of all the notes that have occurred. So you do not know what each individual said or did. Um, yeah, so this is an enhancement that I'm working on right now. It has been Thank taking you. priority over the big stuff. And so here we have under five enhancements or something that we're working on right now. And so uh, I was up uh, for TAFMs, for 20 years TAFM, our team still is manually calculating things. So like a larger priority for us is making our technicians' capabilities quicker by automating every process we can here. And so I just 
like to point out, we're still manually calculating things, it's not, not going to make it any better for you all, so we're trying to make those things faster. With the discussion of retirees filling out the TMC portion of the application, I had people do this on their own and even check approved in the commander section. Fix people into the program to either not allow the member to even see the other sections or not allow to input anything in those areas. As of right now, we cannot mess with that because of the way the applicants are routed. They're not routed by responsibility or roles. So how would the system know that you are a TMC? Outside of self-identification, the members always just self-identify themselves. So part of our constraint is how open the routing system is. So we can take away those two accordion pieces. Um, the best we can do is advise them to hey, fill out the application portion and not the team. But I'll just right. so we are paying on that. Uh, but we were been very. Uh, we fought that for a very long time. It was at least a month of consistent conversations around how to route this. We're, likely to. we're talking like all the way up to uh, General Miller level. Like this is how high it got. That's because the evaluation process really broke um, in certain ways, and it was not popular at all to have constrained environment where people couldn't just select who they needed to go to. So uh, can we add an option for a retire return member? I think you're talking about retire return your request tonight. Request therapy needs to be less, but we know we track it and no documentation is received. Um, so Jordan, are you guard or reserve? Reserve. Reserve. And so um, you're asking, is there a way for ARPC retirement to create an application for a member to revert? I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit, ma'am. Are you asking if there is a way for ARPC to create an application for a member who is going to retire revert? Yes. Yeah. So th there's a lot going on with indispensability and who owns the program because the law created an opportunity for people to complete it, but they did not create an opportunity for policy because it's owned by so many people. Um, we here at ARPC do not actually complete the mill PDS update. We have to submit a CMS case um, in most, in your reserve, so I forget what who does it for you, but ARPC Retirements does not complete the mill PDS transaction for a retire revert at all. So I have to say no, because we do not do that. Um, we actually, in, for an Air National Guard member, submit a CMS case down to A1Q because our PSM function has to do it. So there is not an appetite right now to create a application because ARPC Retirements does not own that process. And thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Ooh. Sorry. Um, I don't know what happened. There we go. How long is product accessible to the MPF after the member has separated or retired? Um, I think it goes away immediately. I think you lose access to them in mill PDS and they transition to a different passcode. That is when you lose access. Sorry, Mike. That says my colleague was discussed when the HR specialist role in FSS will be able to run retirement reports. Yes, it will. Uh, they are working it right now. Uh, we understand that it is not working as great as uh, you would like it to. Uh, Spencer addresses it in his slides and either will hope to train September 12th on our next town hall or will train earlier than that if it becomes a functionality that exists and operates effectively. Yeah, and I would say, um, cater your expectations to how dynamic this report can be since it's the first iteration. There will always be enhancements. We are trying to get to the rough and ready model, not the, you know, the, the upper echelon Audi model, right? So hopefully this time next, next month, I have something better for you. Senior Master Sergeant, I'm sorry, I'm going to say your name wrong. 
Rahio, Rogillo. Uh, what's happening in members' apps? If we didn't know about the ETS retirement date being one day apart, it's made with the ETS and retirement the same date. Um, they're likely being disapproved. If you know one, call the MPF line and we can and we can work through it. All right. Chat said, I received an email from the leadership saying the retirement capability of MyFSS has been delayed and will likely not be available until November at the earliest. Town Hall Zoom info was then provided. Can you clarify what this meant? My TMC was able to approve my retirement application yesterday and my commander was able to see it. The retirement capability of MyFSS has been delayed. What, what leadership are you speaking of and where did they get this information? Because the only capability that they could possibly be speaking of and we're hopeful that it's going to be sooner is RPA. And also, sir, um, did you submit a reduced retired pay age application? Uh, I did not. Um, the first question first. Um, it was an email that was sent uh, from my group commander. Um, I assume that he must have received some information about the town hall. Um, I, just from the comments uh, from uh, the very beginning, it doesn't sound like this message was accurate. Uh, so that's really good news. Um, where the information came from, I can't say, but I just, I ripped the, uh, the verbiage right out of the email that I got. Uh, and I put that in quotes, um, and I'm I'm happy to hear that the system is not going to be down completely for four months. Yeah, sir, I'm really worried though. Uh, can you are you able to provide any of that to me so I can do a little bit of digging and find out where that may have come from or where things got lost in translation? Because that's extremely uh, worrisome for us. Yes, uh, I could do that offline. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I can send you a direct email or a message with my email, maybe. Okay. So I can uh, and sorry, the follow-up question about something reduced age retirement, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I, I had 16 uh, years of active duty um, and I have uh, 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 two different sets of AGR orders that are, are going to bring me to 21 years, but I'm going to be retiring at 20 years and four months. Um, so. If you don't mind, I have another question. Basically, there's nothing in the application process that talks about um, having enough PCARS points by the time you retire. Everything says uh, go to your PCARS, make sure that everything is accurate and that you have enough points to retire. Well, that's not true because I won't actually have enough points to retire until about six months from now. Not to mention the PCARS doesn't track the last three months. Uh, it's got everything up through uh, March, but doesn't have anything for April, May, June, or July. And then of course, there's the time that I'm going to do between now and when I retire. So there's no way that PCARS could be accurate with all of my points. Otherwise, I'd have to wait until I do 20 years, wait till PCARS updates, and then apply for retirement at like 20 years and eight months. And it doesn't really address that very accurately in the pre-application uh, information. We will write that down. We recognize, and I know you've been here for a while, sir, but welcome to the Garden Reserve and the problem of statuses and points. I will tell you that our technicians work super closely with points. We can update that uh, communication to see what the um, pre-application checklist says, just to say, we I don't know, we recognize that your PCARS is not accurately going to reflect your last set of orders. Um, it's hard for us too because we yeah, recognize it. I think that those are all addressed uh, by uh, you know by the ARC uh, and the ARPC uh, by submitting your your orders. Um, so I'm not too concerned that it won't get hashed out eventually. Um, but it just it it when I'm putting the application in, it makes me think maybe I'm doing something wrong when really I'm doing what I'm supposed to. You guys are doing what, what you're supposed to um, by looking at the AGR orders and saying, yes, this will take this person through by the time they retire. Um, but there's nothing, but there's nothing in the verbiage that says, you know, be advised your P cars will not be completely up to date and they will, you know, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't address that, you know, that there, uh, that there could, there's going to be points missing. So by submitting your AGR app, uh, orders, you know, that will be, that will take care of itself. Okay, we've written it down. That makes Thank sense. You. 
Absolutely. And we do because when we submit to um, DFAS, we as soon as we get to your application, that's why we do need your last set of orders because then we send your orders to the points team. The points team actually rolls up your P cars, submits us a copy, and that's a part of your requirement for your package. So, and but just understand. to and just to confirm, uh, typically people will submit the retirement application first, and then subsequent to that, after that, they will then curtail their AGR orders, not the other way around, correct? It's the chicken or the egg. We've had a lot of conversations about this, sir, with DPA. Um, they, I, I don't think it's very clearly defined for the reserve. And I will tell you for retirements, we do not, We've had a conversation about, do we need a curtailed order? And uh, we have talked, and as a team, we have said, we do not need a curtailed order to do that because if you so choose to put a date for retirement in prior to your um, order's end date and you don't get your orders curtailed, then you're gonna have a debt because our um, actions in MILPDS are going to take precedence over your outstanding order. So. We've talked to DPA and it doesn't matter to ARPC retirements, which you do. If I, so I don't think they have a requirement and I don't know if they do, but we do not have a requirement for you to have a curtailed order prior to is the bottom line. So it would okay. make sense to put it and then let them know. Now at the and States the, for the guard. The, the flip side, flip side of that coin is that by waiting to get the retirement application uh, approved, um, you have a solid date to then request for the curtailment versus sometimes retirement applications find errors. Uh, the retirement date has to be changed and now your curtailment doesn't match up with your, uh, with your actual approved retirement date. So that would be That's the argument. And also the time and grade. A lot of officers don't recognize that they have to have three years active duty time and grade in order to retire as a Lieutenant Colonel. So um, that does change those and that makes sense. Okay, thank you for covering all those things. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, this is uh, Sergeant Hubbard from the 340th. Uh, I know that everybody has their own processes, but what I've been doing, because we have a lot of AGRs here, um, when the, I have the members go ahead and submit their um, retirement order to me, and then I will, if I see that they are uh, an AGR, then I will, uh, which is one of the verification checks I do, then I will also look at their curtailment um, status. And if their curtailment has not been approved yet, then I will hold their, at my level, I will hold their um, retirement application until I know that curtailment has been approved. Now, I know that there might be some applications that get put very closely to their retirement date. So that would be something you'd have to work on like individually, but most of my people have been submitting it ahead enough of time that, you know, that wasn't going to be an issue, uh, especially because we have a lot of pilots and if they have an, an aviation bonus, they have to get that approved through A3, which doesn't always happen. So um, mm. that's how I do it. It may be something that you could uh, put in your own just to make sure that uh, those things are kind of working out a little bit better. Uh, it's worked here successfully. And am I correct to assume that you are uh, your unit's TMC? Uh, I'm I'm the wing TMC here. Okay, great. Uh, I really appreciate that. You're welcome. Master Sergeant Matheson, that's correct. If you're just coordinating on an application that was input on 15 July for one Feb, you do not need to worry about the application needing a six month waiver. And it, does it require an attachment? No. No. So you're good to go. I think that's all the questions we have. Is there anyone else? Well, thanks for taking the time to join us. We hope it was helpful. I think they are. Um, I will not be here on September 12th. Actually, this will be my last town hall. Oh, wow. Yeah. So this will be my last town hall. Thanks, everyone, um, for all you're doing out there. And uh, Sergeant Gunter, we'll see you on September 12th.